What's up, y'all? It's Andy Story, your neighborhood art director that designs movie posters for a living. Today, I'm really excited because we're going to create an awesome piece of artwork and design and typography using a number of different tools in Photoshop. We're going to be using the Liquify tool. We're going to create our own noise. We're going to use adjustment layers and we're gonna use blend modes and a lot of blurring techniques to create this trippy, drippy, awesome text effect. <laughs> what? Create a new document. I'll be using a 16 by nine inch dimension at 200 PPI. Go ahead and drop your image into your document from here. And the image I'll be using is actually from unsplash.com. I'll go ahead and drop the image name if you want to follow along precisely. From here, all we're going to do is select our image and then cut our image out so that we have an easy to work with image. And if you're new to using the pen tool and masking out, I highly suggest you check the video out that I created on how to use the pen tool and mask out images. Now that we have the background deleted, we're going to go ahead and create a duplicate and put that duplicate layer above what we just made. And the easy way to do that is by hitting Command J. Actually, let's go ahead and make two extra images to work with. So hit Command J one more time. And from here, we're going to go down to our adjustment layers, go to hue saturation. And from hue saturation, we can start messing around with the color. Now let's go to another adjustment layer and hit up color balance. And from color balance, we're going to do the same thing, mess around with the colors, bring in some cyan, maybe a little bit of blue, and just make it look really, really cool. Now let's go do some more adjustment layers. And this time we're going to go to photo filter. And from photo filter, we're just going to mess around with the colors a little more. For instance, this underwater preset is really cool as well. Let's go to another adjustment layer. And this time we're gonna mess around with the channel mixer. And in channel mixer, you can go ahead and play around with the reds, the greens, or the blue. But in this particular situation, we're just gonna increase the blue a tiny bit. Heading back down to our adjustment layers, this time we're gonna use color lookups. And we're gonna go to a preset called teal orange plus contrast. Now that we have an assortment of adjustment layers above our photography, we can then go ahead and start to experiment a little by clicking on those adjustment layers. For instance, this particular one, we're gonna mess around with a hue saturation layer and just see what happens if the saturation is increased or decreased. And you can even go into the hue and play with the hue. So from here on out, we're basically just experimenting a lot. And from here, let's go ahead and do one more adjustment layer with the hue saturation and mess around with the color until you have something that you like. When you have something you like color-wise, it's a good time to make a complete copy of everything that we've created. So hitting shift on your keyboard and selecting all of your layers. And once all your layers are selected, go ahead and hit Command J and this will create a duplicate of everything. From here, we're going to create clipping masks and clip all of those adjustment layers to the photographic image. The easy way to do that is to hit Alt or Option in between the adjustment layer and your photographic image, and that way it will have everything clipped to that image and affect that image only. And now let's go ahead and do that same exact exercise to the bottom image as well. So make sure that those are all clipped appropriately. Now go to new layer and hit new layer. And we're going to start to work on our background. Go to your gradient tool. And from your gradient tool, we can go ahead and pick a gradient color that you like. Now with the gradient tool, go ahead and click on the top of your image holding the shift key and that will create a perfect 90 degree line downwards. And then go ahead and release and we have this beautiful gradient to work with. Now, hide our top layers now. It'll just be easier for us to work on this bottom layer and get a little bit of a blur going on. Now right click on that bottom layer and go to convert to smart object. 
the smart object will allow us to non-destructively edit that particular layer. While still clicked on that smart object, we're gonna go up to filter and from filter, we're gonna to go to blur and blur to Gaussian blur. And here we can mess around with the strength of the blur. Now that we are working in this smart object, you can double click on Gaussian blur and make your edits as you see fit by going back and forth and adjusting the amount of blur that you want to use. Let's go ahead and work on that top image. So go ahead and make it visible and then right click and convert to smart object. Now we can go ahead and create a mask and, to, and the easy way to do that is by hitting control and clicking on that layer. And now you'll see the marching ants pop up and from here we can go down to the Japanese flag symbol and hit the mask icon. And now we have a mask created as you can see. Now go up to filter and from filter go to blur and then go to Gaussian blur again. And from here you can mess around with the blur and notice that because we have a mask created that none of the blur is going to go outside of the mask edges. Go ahead and mess around with the radius and pixels of the blur until you see something you like. And on this particular one, we're just gonna go with 15 pixels. Now we can have a lot of fun by creating our own noise. And the noise is gonna help distort the image and make it look really, really cool. And to do that, all we really need to do is create a new layer by going to the new layer icon and dragging that to the top of all of our artwork. While still clicked on that new image, we're just going to go over to the paint bucket. And on the paint bucket, we're just gonna pick a gray, neutral color and that's going to allow us to create some noise. While we're on that gray layer, we can go up to filter, filter noise, and then to add noise. And on add noise, we can go ahead and mess around with the amounts. And for this situation, we're gonna use a heavy amount of noise as you can see. From here, we can go up to the blending mode and change the blending mode so that this noise will work correctly over all of our photography. Using the keyboard arrow key, I'm gonna to toggle through all the blending modes and eventually end up on overlay. While on that layer, let's stay organized and go ahead and click it and change the name to noise. Now let's go ahead and create a duplicate layer by hitting Command J and now we have another noise layer to add even more noise to our piece of art. Let's go ahead and create one more layer by hitting Command J, and now we have a third layer of noise to mess around with. Let's go ahead and drop the opacity on that top layer of noise to 21%. Now let's go ahead and do one more copy and paste situation, but we're gonna do it in a different way. So clicking on our bottom layer and then hitting Shift up into the top adjustment layer and once everything is selected we can go ahead and hit alt on our keyboard and drag those upwards and now we have duplicated layers above to work with and because it is a smart object we can go ahead and double click on the gaussian blur and readjust that blur dropping it down to 150 pixels from here, we're gonna go ahead and get really organized by turning all of those layers into a group and its own folder. And to do that, you can go ahead and use Shift on your keyboard and select all of those layers and either hit the folder icon or use a hotkey by hitting Command G. And now you can go ahead and name that whatever you would like. All right, y'all, I forgot to do this, but I need a little favor. If you could please just hit that like button so that you can help the algorithm and help this channel grow, that would be great. Thank you. The second part of this tutorial is all about the typography. I'm gonna go ahead and use the text tool. You can either hit T or hit the T icon in the left and type out whatever you'd like to type out. For this piece of artwork, we're gonna be using Who Are You? and the font we'll be using is Bebas New. Let's go ahead and track out the type as well. So in your character panel for your typography, go to VA and put that all the way at 200. I'm just going to get rid of the actual U and type out U, so it's now Y-O-U. Now in the type dropdown, we're gonna to go to warp text, and from warp text, 
go down to wave and on wave, we're gonna make an adjustment of plus 50 on the bend, hit okay, and then from okay, it's gonna make this really cool wave effect. Go ahead and position it where you want it. And from here, we're gonna right click on that layer and rasterize the layer. Now let's go up to filter and from filter to liquify. And what we're gonna do is liquefy that rasterized layer and make the type look really, really funky. And in the liquify tool, all we're gonna really be doing is using the smudge tool and you can play around with the pressure and just basically pull down all of these letters and get them really drippy, really weird, and basically take it Take your design to where you want to go with it. Now this design is just going to have like kind of a drippy effect. And uh, as you can see, there's a lot of back and forth until you get it right. And the cool thing is you can hit Command Z if you do make mistakes to go back and forth. Now from here, we're going to go ahead and make a duplicate of that type layer by hitting Alt, holding that layer and just dragging it down. And now we have a duplicate ready to mess around with. Go ahead and hide that bottom layer and then double click on that top layer to bring up our layer styles. Now in layer style panel, we're gonna go to inner shadow. So go ahead and hit inner shadow and then from inner shadow, we're gonna select a color. Now you can either pick a yellow with the color picker or use a pre-made library and go ahead and pick something that's gonna work for your design. This particular design is gonna look good with the yellow because it's gonna contrast with all of the purples. Now the blend mode we can keep to normal and on the opacity, we're gonna crank that up to 100%. We're gonna adjust the distance to 11 pixels, leave the choke at zero, and then the size we're gonna put at five pixels. Go ahead and activate that piece of type that we didn't use, that spare copy, and hit Command J. So we're gonna duplicate that one more time just in case and go ahead and hide that copy. On our copied layer, go up to filter and from filter to blur and blur to Gaussian blur. And from here, we can make some adjustments to how much blur we want. And as you can see, it makes a really, really cool effect. So play with the different pixels and radius sizes to get something that you want. And we're gonna do this one more time with that same layer by making a copy, hitting Command J, and with that new copy, we're gonna go do some more blurring. So go up to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and then this time, we're gonna increase the blur slightly from 20 pixels to 50 pixels. And now it's a good time to mess around with the opacity. So on that layer, we're just gonna drop it slightly. And this is another subjective situation. You can either have more blur or less blur, depending on what kind of project you're working on. This particular situation, just dropping it to 50%. Now I'm gonna select all of my type layers and just rearrange where I want that type to go with the move tool. As soon as your typography is placed where you want it, we're just gonna go ahead and merge those three pieces of type. So select those type layers, right click, and then go to merge layers. From here on that merge type layer, we're just gonna make a quick little adjustment by fixing out the U and making it a little bit more legible. So from here, all we're gonna do is go up to our filter and from filter, liquify. And once again, we'll be in the liquify mode where we can make that adjustment. Now, as you can see, we're just kind of freestyling around, trying to make something that looks cool, maybe a little bit more legible. And the other thing is because these are merged layers, it's gonna make a really cool effect once we hit the okay, which you'll see right about now. And that is it. I really like where this was taken. There was so much that we learned on this tutorial. We went through adjustment layers, blending modes, layer styles, blur, you name it, we did it. Uh, hopefully you have gotten way more acquainted with what Photoshop can do for you. If you have questions, feel free to drop them below and I thank you for watching this tutorial. See you on the next one.